Welcome. The Google team is excited to let you know you can now host a Google Meet for up to 1,000 attendees with no time limit. However, there are some important factors to be aware of when you are hosting a large meeting. With that being said, we also strongly encourage you to pre-configure your meeting in advance to be best prepared for your large upcoming meeting. Let's go ahead and talk more about that. On this slide, you can see it's customized for a meeting that's larger than 500 up to 1,000. When you're preparing for your large meeting, you want to pre-configure it in your Google Calendar invite, and I will show you how that is done here shortly. With that, I do want to provide you additional resources to understand the different roles. We, we know by now there is the organizer of a Google Meet. There is also an opportunity to invite co-host. In a large meeting, you would want multiple co-hosts to help run your successful meeting. Then you have a contributor, someone that might be adding some input in regarding the meeting, but doesn't need to have access to control the meeting. And you can see in the table, I have provided you what they can and cannot do if granted that access. And at the end is the viewer. The viewer is there just to sit and get, get an understanding of what's happening in a large meeting. They have limited access. So keep that in mind. And I strongly encourage you to check this table. Also with that, Google is constantly changing. And then even in the update, it stated that they are working on to improving the impact for the viewer. So more things will be changing in the future. Now I'm going to take the time and show you how to pre-configure a large meeting. I'm currently in Google Calendar and today's persona, I am trainer one. I have an upcoming large meeting at four o'clock today. So let's go ahead and pre-configure as suggested in the slide deck. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the event that I've already created and I'm going to click edit. As the organizer, trainer one, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-configure my large meeting. To do so, click on the gear next to the join Google Meet and look at your video call options. The first thing you need to do is to enable host management. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle to the right and turn on host management. Now I'm not gonna talk more about do you want them to share their screen, send chat messages and etc. That is up to you. But let's go ahead and click on guest on the left hand side. Now you can see there is some more options for you when you are hosting a meeting. I'm going to go ahead and add trainer two as a co-host. It's always good practice to have a co-host or two. You can have up to 25 at the current time. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and just set trainer two as a co-host. Now you saw on the table before, they'll have the full access as pretty much as an organizer. And you can find more details on that slide deck and it'll be posted in the description below. However, I do want some contributors. Trainer three has some valuable input in this large meeting, but I really don't wanna give trainer three access to manage the meeting itself, but she has some valuable input. She can add via chat. She can also verbally explain a situation and so much more in the Google Meet. So I'm going to then give trainer three access. To do so, please note, you have to turn on everyone is a viewer by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that then I can now customize even more and change it to trainer three as the contributor. And everybody else on the call will be viewers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. I'm gonna click save again. So I'm gonna go ahead and join as trainer one and keep in mind trainer one is the organizer, the person in charge of this meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and just join the Google Meet. And we're gonna just wait patiently as the other ones join this call. So now it looks like trainer two has joined the call. So trainer two, if you remember, was the co-host. So the co-host, I'm gonna pull over trainer two's account. Trainer two has full access to the host controls on the right-hand side. So she is helping manage this large meeting. Now let's go ahead and have trainer three join and you'll see what it looks like for trainer three. And remember, trainer three is the contributor. So I'm currently in persona trainer three. And remember, trainer three is the contributor so let's see what trainer three has access to. Notice on the bottom right hand corner, she does not have access to the host controls. She does have the option to look at the activities so she can answer questions and polls if the host or the co-host allow it. She can also submit a chat message if she chooses to and so much more. She also does have access to um, enabling her turn on or off her mic turn off proper camera, close captions. She can also react. She can also share a screen and pretty much has 
full participant rights inside this particular Google Meet. However, the viewer, which is going to be the next trainer account for, does not have the same rights as these users do. So now I am under trainer four. Now trainer four is the viewer. I did not give trainer four contributor rights or a co-host rights. Before trainer four even joins, she is notified she is joined as a viewer and tells you her as she joins in so that you will not be able to send chat messages or use your mic or camera. So this is like a true webinar feeling for this particular user. So I'm gonna go ahead and click join as a viewer so you can see how it looks as a viewer. Google does a really good job to even remind you that you're a viewer, reminding you what you can and cannot do, such as chat messages or use your mic or camera. So you'll notice if I go over to the chat menu, it is grayed out and I'm not able to chat as a viewer. However, I'm able to listen in and sit and get on this very large meeting. You can raise your hand. Why do I mention that? Well, let me go back to a co-host or a organizer and maybe I want to see what trainer four has to say. Can that be done during the meeting? Absolutely. So let's go back and I'll change roles for a second. Our trainer two, who was the co-host, could I could open that raised hand in queue, and then I might make that conscious decision that I want to hear what Trainer 4 has to say. I can do that on the go and manage my meeting. I can click on the three dots over here, and I can make Trainer 4 a contributor, which then allows her to have her microphone, be able to react, turn her camera on, and so much more. So now I'm going to go ahead and make her a contributor. And then if I go back to trainer four, I know this is a lot of toggling back and forth. Then you'll see then trainer four has been asked to be invited as a contributor. She has something to say, she'll accept it, and then she'll be able to have the same access as trainer three, the contributor. And so then she can unmute herself and ask her question if she wants verbally, since the organizer and or the co-host allowed it. Before I end this call, I'll go back as the organizer just to give you a better understanding of the things you can do to manage this very large meeting. I'm currently back to trainer one, and you can notice that by going to the top, you can see that is my logo at the top. However, I also have access to the host controls. So again, I'm not gonna go over the training on how to manage it in the sense of your host controls. You can adjust that as you go and make that conscious decision in the meeting. But this is why it's very important that you know the different roles of host, organizer, co-host, moderator, contributor, and viewer, so you have a better understanding to run your large meetings. If you do click on the people icon, it does give you a really good idea who's in the meeting and et cetera, and also the roles that they currently have. With that, I strongly encourage you to check out all the resources posted below in the description to learn more about this amazing update. Thank you.